One of the potential challenges you might have going forward is something which uh, a number of countries that actually get their public sector budgets in control and, and uh, under uh, very strong you know, prudent management. Uh, and yet, the corporate sector then goes out and, and borrows externally uh, because they too need to grow. Uh, and if the capital market domestically is not able to, to feed that, and in fact, in a number of developing situations, uh, Iceland was a great example, New Zealand's balance sheet looks this way, um, uh, Australia looks a little bit like this in that the, the, the government has got its budgets in place, uh, but the corporate uh, borrowing, external borrowing is um, you know, on the high side, or uh, were, were on the high side in the case of uh, Iceland, for example. Um, the Philippines corporate sector is an ambitious um, uh, part of your economy, uh, and if you're going to get them to participate in your PPP programs, uh, they would need funding as well. Um, and you haven't sort of fixed this, um, the capacity of the Philippines to attract um, foreign direct investment at this point uh, is su uh, sufficient to, to fund some of the projects that you have in place. Um, you know, do you have some checks in place that um, you do not get into a runaway situation on the corporate debt side? Uh, first, uh, that's certainly not the case in the Philippines. We don't have that uh, situation with the private sector overexposed to foreign uh, uh, borrowing. Uh, secondly, we do have checks. The uh, Central Bank of the Philippines uh, has to approve all uh, external uh, uh, borrowings and they monitor the outstanding uh, amounts and the capacity of the entity to be able to uh, pay uh, those uh, borrowers. Uh, third, there's enough liquidity in the Philippine uh, uh, capital uh, market and the Philippine banking uh, system. My estimate is about 3 trillion pesos just sitting there uh, waiting to be uh, tapped. No? Uh, in dollar terms, that's uh, what. Uh, 80 uh, billion dollars uh, yeah. that uh, roughly that uh, is there sitting uh, waiting to be tapped for more productive uh, uh, pur uh, purposes and uh, uh, in fact as, as uh, in my role in building uh, the capital markets I've created the 25 year benchmarks I've made them more liquid uh, 20 year benchmarks we're making them part of our regular uh, uh, offering I heard that uh, a major global bank is about to put up a uh, uh, Philippine focused infrastructure uh, uh, fund in pesos. Uh, and um, certainly, uh, we are confident that there's enough liquidity to be able to fund the uh, first uh, projects in our uh, pipeline. Um, the World Economic Forum uh, uh, survey has us at 10 notches higher than uh, what, where we were in 2009 and we're working on it. That's the third plank of uh, President Aquino's program, really improving uh, uh, doing business in the Philippines, uh, aligning uh, uh, forms, uh, processes, uh, making it easier to register uh, businesses using technology to do so. Uh, we're investing in that. Uh, in, on my part of the responsibility, we're about to launch the national single window in the Bureau of Customs where uh, people can get permits from 40 uh, agencies online in a portal uh, to do uh, imports and exports. No? And once this is up, we can connect this with a uh, national single window of other countries. No? Uh, so we're investing there. Um, incorporation of companies, the Land Bank of the Philippines, which has over 300 uh, uh, branches in the Philippines, is tied up with the Securities and Exchange Commission, which has only eight offices, uh, so that all the branches of that bank can accept requests for incorporation, again, making it easier uh, to do business in the Philippines. Then uh, uh, the 200 local government, uh, largest local government units have agreed to have the same forms, the same procedures, uh, and these are all steps we're taking to uh, improve our, uh, our, uh, our environment in the Philippines. Give us an idea of the um, animal called a state-owned enterprise in the Philippines. Yeah. In a way, it's somewhat uh, different from state-owned enterprises mm -hmm. in other countries, uh, which are often uh, one of the first assets that um, a government uh, tries to rationalize in order to make sure that it's able to fund itself and, and also provide uh, infrastructure and services uh, on a commercially uh, capable basis. 
But the Philippines has been somewhat slow in uh, rationalizing its state-owned enterprises. So what's happening on that front? Well, um, I'm glad you asked the question. We just passed the bill, yes. uh, the government-owned and controlled corporations bill, uh, yeah. bill that allows us now to rationalize uh, this corporation and classify them as to whether they are commercial already and can be privatized or whether they're doing functions that should be in government uh, where we can introduce performance measures and uh, rate their performance so that we can introduce meritocracy with these government uh, corporations. In fact, we realized that this is an area that needed uh, a lot of improvement and that's why we worked closely with Congress immediately. And this was one of the first few bills uh, and it really empowers the executive department to well, so uh, restructure. Well, now that the bill is in place, what are some of the priorities that you have uh, on the use of that bill? Well, uh, first, uh, to, to set up performance measures. Right. Uh, in the past, they operate on their own. Uh, their, uh, their, their targets and the goals were not aligned with national uh, uh, targets. So that's the first thing. So that all arms of government are pointed in the right uh, direction. Once that's done, we measure their performance. No? Then as we do that, uh, we look at how uh, efficient they are. We benchmark them against... Sure. Uh, but all of this yeah. means that you're putting yourself on a very long road um, where you're going to be just telling them how good and how bad they are without any real road map as to deciding which of the state-owned enterprises should still belong to the state and which should be privatized, uh, which should be uh, loaded off on the, the, the stock market. That's so part on. of the process and that's something that you cannot decide uh, with a swing of a magic uh, wand. You need to study. Uh, the, the roles that these entities uh, so, uh, play and that, so that process is ongoing. In fact, uh, one of the things that we're looking at right now is the merger of the Land Bank of the Philippines and the Development Bank of the Philippines. Uh, this is something that's being studied so that they become uh, more efficient in intermediating uh, uh, funds for the program of uh, government. We're looking at an entity, in fact there's a proposal right now for the privatization of uh, uh, the duty-free uh, Philippines uh, Inc. No? It's being uh, reviewed. No? So uh, just like in the private sector, you need a process. Uh, you cannot just jump into conclusion on uh, whether an entity should go left or right. You need to uh, uh, study. But no? just listening to the way you're describing yeah. it to me, yeah. it gives me the sense that um, you have no intention of giving anything away um, and that you know, far from it, far, far from it. In fact, uh, uh, we have privatized companies in the uh, past. Uh, I've uh, pushed for increased offering of sale of uh, PNOC EC, the exploration uh, uh, company, which is listed in the stock uh, exchange. Petron, which is the national oil uh, uh, company, has been completely uh, privatized. Uh, we're looking at uh, others that should be uh, privatized. So, Obviously not. Uh, so the process is very important. Are there uh, rules about the privatization in that? Now, and this is this would be a message to the foreign investor. Yeah. And how can the foreign investor participate in some of these privatizations? Well, uh, the, the commission has to be put in place. Now, right now, uh, as Secretary of Finance, I'm doing the job. But the law has created a commission, and we're putting together that uh, commission, and they will continue the job that we've started. But clearly, the Aquino administration is committed to making sure that entities uh, that are commercial and doing the function of private enterprises should not be in the hands of government. Uh, to those that are uh, doing functions that are for government and regulatory in nature should go back to uh, uh, government. Three, those that are missionary should be revisited and uh, be reviewed to make sure that there is a focus, there is an objective, and that uh, the results are uh, all this measures. sounds exciting, but you were part of the previous administration. The For a short time. And, and, and I resigned. And you did not have enough time to set in place some of these? Because the previous what? administration did not have the right agenda. I resigned because we questioned, one, the mandate of the previous president, and two, the culture of uh, uh, corruption. M most of my life was in the private uh, uh, sector. And the only reason I came back is, one, we have a president with the largest mandate ever of a Philippine president, and two, run on a platform of good governance, and three, is walking his dog. And that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm here to help him uh, make that uh, happen. We're on our 15th month in uh, office, and we've done a lot over those 15 uh, uh, months. We've changed the direction of the Philippines across the four pillars that I've mentioned. The fourth pillar being investing in our, our uh, people. people 
uh, we're increasing that amount now to a billion dollars, no? uh, making sure that the children of the poorest of the poor go to school uh, uh, and are brought to health centers so that when they grow up, they can become productive participants once the economy of the Philippines takes off. Because if we don't do that, uh, this is the fastest growing segment of our uh, population, then they become uh, uh, a problem. No? So we'd like to make, continue to make sure that they become an asset rather than a problem.